Thank you, everyone. Uh, we are a publicly traded company, and I will be making some forward-looking statements. Please refer to our SEC filings for additional details. So for this conference, I'm going to talk about two gene therapy programs that we have. Uh, the first one is Mitocar for advanced heart failure. And this is an AAV gene therapy uh, platform targeting an enzyme called circa 2A in the heart. Uh, we've demonstrated an 88% reduction in hospitalizations for heart failure, and this was the basis of our breakthrough therapy designation, which we received recently. Um, and the second product that we're just starting some work on sort of bridges the gene therapy and stem cell space. It is a gene therapy approach to deliver the ligand for C-Kit, um, or CDN117, as many of us refer to, but which actually happens to be a very potent tyrosine kinase, and the stem cell factor is the growth factor for that but most of the talk will be on Mitocar. This is our company. We have uh, been around for about 10 years. We took this Mitocar program from very early stage into essentially a pivotal trial right now. We have a number of uh, executives with experience in the biotech industry, as well as uh, we have three pharma companies that are investors in Celadon. So heart failure, I think you've heard quite a bit about this if you were at some of the early cell therapy talks. There's obviously been hundreds of trials targeting uh, various forms of stem cells, uh, progenitor cells for the repair of the heart. Um, it's an enormous problem. The basic problem in heart failure is that the cardiac muscle has been damaged and cannot contract forcefully enough to keep the fluid out of the tissues. And when this happens in the lungs, there's a reduced oxygen transfer. Uh, over a million uh, heart failure hospitalizations each year, and it's the main target of our uh, endpoints for our clinical trials. The patients that we are targeting have exhausted all treatment options except for a left ventricular assist device or a transplant. And uh, there are very few of these procedures performed annually, and there's just an enormous gap in the treatment. Uh, 60 billion annually in the United States for treatment of heart failure, and the main uh, driver for those costs are these acute hospitalizations, and that's what we're targeting in our program. So what was discovered in the 90s is that all forms of heart failure at the end stage of the disease result in a deficiency inside the cardiac cell of an enzyme called circa 2A. It's within, the, it's within the heart, so you cannot do exogenous enzyme replacement therapy. Bristol Myers Squibb, Lilly, and Merck all had large programs trying to target this pathway with small molecules but essentially failed. What you are looking at here is just a brief mechanistic slide. On the left panel is a cardiac cell. Uh, it's a muscle cell, and so it has a sarcoplasmic reticulum. And the basis of contraction of all muscle cells is movement of calcium in and out of the organelle called the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And it's the circa 2A enzyme that pumps the calcium back into this SR at each cycle of contraction. On the right are examples of human heart cells tested uh, in vitro, either from normal patients, for patients with heart failure, or heart failure cells where gene therapy has corrected the circuit to a deficiency. Take home message here is that um, in all cases, the single enzyme replacement therapy can rescue the contraction of this end stage cell. So it's really sort of the, what TNF is to inflammation, circuit to A deficiency is to heart failure. So we're using AAV vectors. You've heard a lot about them. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. It's a simple administration procedure in the cath lab. Patients are under mild sedation and they typically go home the same day. It's a single dose administration. So I'd like to move on to our clinical trial results. The CUPID-1 study was a double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled trial in the United States. 
Our principal investigator was Mariel Jessup. She's currently president of the American Heart Association. We tested three dose levels of mitocar versus placebo, uh, and these were patients who had to have been optimized on all available therapies, including drugs and devices. The first data that I'll show you is looking at adjudicated clinical events, and these included worsening heart failure, which were hospitalizations, need for a heart transplant, myocardial infarction, IV inotropes, need for an elevat or all-cause death. Each line in this graph is an individual patient followed throughout the 12 months on study, and each bubble is an adjudicated clinical event. Starting on the top panel, in the placebo patients on optimized therapy, you can see why we have such a dramatic unmet need in this population. These were the best managed patients in the United States. They're riddled with hospitalizations and, and, and death. In the mitocar low dose and the mid dose, we're able to delay the onset of the clinical events, and in the high dose group, dramatically reduce the clinical events overall. It was this basis of uh, the reduction, especially in hospitalizations over time, that led us to propose an endpoint for registration to both the EMA and the FDA, which is uh, multiple hospitalizations over time, over a 12-month period. And if you plot the data from the Cupid-1 study, you get a curve that looks like a Kaplan-Meier curve, but basically it's looking at the rate of the events, hospitalizations mostly on the y-axis um, versus time. At 12 months, uh, which is the primary registration package that the regulators have asked for, we have a hazard ratio of 0.12, or an 88% reduction of hospitalizations with a p-value of 0.003. And this was fairly durable over the three years of follow-up, where we still had uh, over an 80% reduction in hospitalizations. We also had, in this small trial, a relatively uh, robust signal in terms of overall survival. And so we are uh, very eager to look at our upcoming data from our larger confirmatory trial. Importantly, safety was superb. Uh, I've sat through now a couple of days of this conference and heard lots of off-the-cuff comments about, oh, gene therapy, oh, viral vectors. Bottom line is, we actually saw an increase in SAEs in the placebo group by th over 30% versus our drug-treated arm. And we saw absolutely no increase in any abnormalities and any clinical enzymes and certainly no evidence of any adverse immunological reaction. So safety was very strong. The CUPID-2 study is a confirmatory 250 patient trial, which is completed enrollment, and we will have data from this trial in April of 2015. It's a very similar patient population as the CUPID-1 study, uh, and we are targeting in this trial a 45% reduction of heart failure hospitalizations as opposed to what we demonstrated already in our previous trial, which was uh, 88%. This is still a treatment effect that is unprecedented if we're able to achieve it uh, in heart failure therapeutics. The secondary endpoint is time to first terminal event, uh, all-cause death, transplant, or LVAD. A regulatory landscape, we've had very, very good strong and, and um, encouraging interactions with the, both EMA and the, United, and the FDA. Starting with the EMA, they've approved our protocol, our design, our endpoints, and have agreed that a safety database, which is consistent with our current trial and some of our other ancillary studies, is adequate for registration. So for purposes of the EMA, this is a pivotal study. In the United States, um, we have fast track, we have a special protocol assessment around the endpoints, and as I said, we were recently granted breakthrough therapy designation. Uh, whether we need to do a phase three trial or not will be data dependent. Um, so we're looking forward to those data and those discussions. 
So I'd like to turn uh, my focus now to our other gene therapy program that we recently uh, in licensed, which is, uh, as I mentioned, the Stem Cell Factor Project. And many of us in many fields have uh, been following CKIT cells for a variety of indications as a marker that we sort on or we do immunohistochemistry on. It's basically one of the most potent tyrosine kinases. It's one of the targets of GLEVAC, um, and uh, it's well characterized. And the, the growth factor that triggers proliferation of CKIT cells is also well understood. It's called stem cell factor. It's approved in Canada and Australia as a soluble growth factor, and it's used in peripheral bud stem cell mobilization. So uh, what our concept is, is that we're going to use the membrane-bound form of this cytokine to uh, deliver directly to damaged tissue to recruit and expand resident CKIT cells. And we're able to demonstrate that in a recent publication in circulation research. We're in a myocardial infarction model where we uh, increased uh, CKIT positive cells dramatically. They had uh, both markers, some of them for cardiac progenitors, but also some bone marrow markers. Um, and importantly, we reduced infarct size, um, improved survival, cardiac function, uh, and showed that we could increase the proliferation uh, specifically of these CKIT cells in situ. So we're very excited about this because stem cell treatment for myocardial damage has been, you know, we have lots of positive signals in the clinical arena, uh, but it's still a relatively complex program in terms of a product and a registration. Here we know how to deliver AAV safely to the heart. Um, we uh, believe that we can harness the power of the stem cell regenerative uh, medicine uh, field um, by using essentially this gene therapy approach. This is a summary of our pipeline. Many of our other programs was not, um, did not have time to cover, uh, but as I said, our lead programs in systolic heart failure. We have an ongoing clinical trial in patients with existing LVADs. Then there's some vascular uh, programs that we are in the process of initiating as well. We also have a small molecule program and then the stem cell factor program. So uh, in summary, uh, the Celadon project and, and company has enormous opportunity. We haven't really talked much about the markets, but heart failure uh, presents an opportunity that is the exact opposite of an orphan indication. We have no issues with having to price uh, exorbitantly. Um, we don't have to come up with novel reimbursement strategies. We estimate in the U.S. that we will have about 350,000 patients that are eligible for Mitocar at launch. Our biggest challenge is on scale-up and commercial manufacturing to support a large market, and we are well underway with that. We anticipate uh, our uh, bioreactors to be about 2,000 liters, uh, and we are in the process of doing those demonstration runs this year. We have uh, very promising data from our phase 2A clinical trial. As I mentioned, really unprecedented in the heart failure therapeutics arena, and we believe that this bodes very well for our upcoming uh, phase 2B trial results. Thank you very much.